Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 13 of my giant Hulkbuster suit project. So last time we got a few brackets and things on and we sorted out the placeholders for the bicep so that we can size the shoulder bell. I'm hoping to get at least part of the shoulder bells built today, which will be the last piece of the main frame and fleshing out the shape of the thing. And then we can go on to build the proper chest where this cardboard mock-up is. The other thing I did was to put in some desk drawer sliders in the arm which are eventually going to hold these joysticks so they can slide up and down as my arms move in and out. So today we're going to try and fit these joysticks in, at least so I can grab hold of them um, and then I'm actually going to get into the suit and try and walk around in it in its current form. So let's have a closer look at these joysticks. So the original plan was my hand would go into some sort of cuff so I could move the arm around and then the joystick functions were going to activate the motors which drive the elbow joint, the hands and the opening weapon pods. So I've got enough buttons on here for activating weapons and then hands was going to be one of these functions and moving the elbow was going to be the other joystick function. Uh, the problem I've realised is that in order to actually twist the arms around so to move them outwards and to stretch the arm right out I'm actually going to need to turn this joystick um, and in turning it it's going to switch it which isn't really what I want. So uh, basically what I really need I guess is sticks that are just stationary that I can turn and they're securely fixed to the arm um, but I still need the buttons for all the functions. So I'm going to take one of these to pieces and we'll see what we can do. So I've dismembered one of these joysticks, I've got a pair of them, one for each hand. These are the other bits in the bag, including the base. So uh, the actual top of the joystick is fairly sturdy, so if you remember those games in the 80s where you had to move the stick really quick to make the little man run along doing a sports game or something, um, the actual stick's quite strong. So um, inside there of course we've got the switches, um, and we've got actually another switch on here. So. Um, I think what the plan is going to be is to remove the base as I have and basically make a small hole to fit this through and a 3D printed bracket, like a collar that grips around here and screw that down to just a piece of wood. So basically completely lose the switches on the motion in this direction and just make do with the switches to switch the functions. So that means then of course I'll be able to twist the whole thing around and move the arm around and that's quite a sturdy base, at least with um, another bracket to hold it down securely. So then we've got more than enough buttons which are independent. We've got obviously the fire button which can open the weapon pod, the weapon pop out and fire and then go back inside in a sequence that's pre-programmed. We can use the top button for closing or opening the, the hands. I think they'll be closed by default and when you press the button they'll open. When you let go they'll close again. Um, and that just leaves the elbow motion. So we could use the little auto fire switch for moving the elbow up and down, but there's actually plenty of space for two more switches. So I may just install two more press switches on here. Um, one will bend the elbow and the other one will straighten it. Um, and that means I don't need the other joystick functions at all and I can use that motion to actually move the arm around with quite some force. So let's have a look at the 3D printed parts that we need. So the first 3D printed part for today is this collar which actually goes the other way up on the joystick and this um, the, mi the middle piece there where we've got a kind of tapered section and two slots goes over the existing stick in the middle of that joystick and the slots are for some pegs which um, are where the screws screw each side of the joystick to it. Um, that's got four big holes in the corners which um, will screw it down and as I said before the actual point on the bottom of the joystick will be in a hole as well. So hopefully once that's screwed down to a bit of plywood that should give us a fairly sturdy anchoring. The second piece for this section is this kind of bridge piece. Now um, these are brackets essentially which screw between the two sliders um, which slide up and down so there's two on each side on each arm so there'll be um, two of these in fact screwed to a piece of plywood so they're basically a bridge which goes between the two sliders on each side so there'll be a pair of these on each side so let's get those printed off and then we'll put it all together
for 3D printing my parts. Here they are among some other mess. So we've got the bridge parts here, which are going to go between the two rollers. So they'll screw on like so, either side. And these will then get screwed to the bottom of these pieces of wood at the correct spacing. Um, I've got my joystick collar here. Here's one of them. The other one I've already fitted to the joystick and it was an incredibly tight fit. So um, all I need to do is screw a hole, uh, draw, drill a hole and screw that down to the plate. And then we should be able to pop those in and away we'll go. And I should be able to jump in and have a walk around all being well. So those are fitted in, so they just need to be slotted into the arms and then I'll be able to move them all around. So those joysticks are fitted on there and they feel extremely firm. So let's get those fitted in and then we can do a suit up. So the recap is that I'm wearing snowboard boots and in the bottom of the suit I have snowboard bindings which are remotely operated by cables. Um, it's a bit lashed up at the moment, the releases uh, via bicycle brake help cords, um, but to pull them on I need to pull straps. And eventually I'll come up with a better pulley system. Um, I can then unlock the knee joints, pick up the torso and walk around in it and hopefully do the same in reverse to get out of it. So I just want to test it for weight really. There's not much room in here to move and I think when I pick up the torso it's going to hit the ceiling. But um, anyway, let's have a go. I should be able to get a fair idea for how heavy the torso is and how much um, other stuff we can add to it. So let's have a look. Okay, well that doesn't feel too bad so far. Let's just pull these snowboard bindings shut. Unfortunately the strap is behind me at the moment. Oh, there's one, that was easy enough. And there's the other one, that was okay. And I just need to unlock these knee joints. Um, eventually I'll have proper levers on the end of these cables. For now I haven't, there's one. And ah, there's the other one, so yeah, there we go. Whoa, I should probably grab these arms. So if I get my arms in, ah, there we go. Now I just need to be cautious of the ceiling here, because I will hit it, but uh, yeah, on the whole, this feels okay. I've still got, um, I haven't put the nylon drive belt on my left arm, so it's a bit wobbly, but uh, watching where I'm walking, on the whole, That's feeling all right, and I can move the joysticks perfectly well to operate the functions. So, now with any luck, you know, I'll actually be quite comfortable in that walking around, and I can still bring my arms in as well. Hopefully I'll have other control panels inside to operate extra functions. Um, it's really not too bad, there's a lot of padding in the shoulders anyway, so uh, that's feeling okay on the whole. Great! Alright, now I'm going to try and get out of it. I know I've had an issue with one of the knee uh, knee latches. I'm just getting my feet together at the right spacing. Ah, uh, maybe if I pull those cords, that would be the answer. All right, I think that's it. And then let's hopefully I can release my feet. Yeah, there's one. Oh, excellent. Here we go. So, uh, one of my knees has un unlatched again. I should be able to oh, step down. Here we go. So, apart from a bit of fine tuning on those latches, um, I can do what I need to. So, excellent. So, I just wanted to give you a closer look at the uh, joystick and its slider there. So, there's the joystick. Obviously it slides up and down and the idea was when I reach the arm right out I can slide it up and down for comfort. Um, obviously since I uh, dis discussed that in the last part I've actually made the arms slightly shorter. So now my arm's permanently bent. So um, in the piece of video before I actually had my elbow right in the suit and that was quite uncomfortable although it's possible to move around. So I think I may just put my elbow that side and then if I need to slide up when I reach right out I can do so, so I've got quite a lot of movement in that arm there, as well as being able to twist it, obviously open the weapons pod there, and that'll be activated by the buttons. So um, on the whole I've got some tweaking to do I think to the arm length and the position of some things. I might move the joystick so it's slightly forward and sort of slightly higher, so it's a more natural position, uh, but on the whole the mechanical structure of the suit is okay and I can keep building on it. So let's talk about shoulder bells. 
So I've got this dome here, which is um, basically an 18 inch, 45 centimetre diameter dome. It's one of those ones for putting over bird feed. Um, bird feed is to stop the squirrels jumping on it. I've actually filled in the hole in the top where um, originally the pole would have been. And I was going to use this for an R2-D2 project, so I've had it kicking around for a while. Um, it's not exactly the right movie accurate shape, but it's good enough for a budget build. So this is roughly the right scale for a Hulkbuster shoulder belt. Um, obviously it's a complete hemisphere, which isn't what I want. But it is very good as a former to form the other pieces. So I need to make the pieces as light as possible as I've um, discussed throughout the project. And obviously I don't really want too much weight on my shoulders. So I'm going to use very lightweight foam and sheet material and form some of the contours over this dome. So um, here I've got some 20mm plastazote foam, which is a bit like EVA foam. Quite a big piece. Um, I don't want the, the shoulder bells to just be big flat sections, so they're going to be a layered approach made of contoured pieces. So I'm going to make some templates, um, cut some of the pieces out of this foam, and then layer with 3D printed spaces and a 3D printed frame some foam PVC parts, which are also going to be backed in the same way as the hand plates and the other parts with very thin foam. So we should get that kind of um, inner and outer approach in two colours. So we're probably going to be sealing this with PVA and painting it up in gold and having red parts that um, are over the top and again with 3D printed details. So I've got a, a couple of cardboard templates here. So we've got one piece that's going to be thick foam and another piece which will obviously be on, both on each side. So that's going to be made of foam PVC backed with foam and it will be twin tone. So just um, going to have a look at what that looks like. Obviously these will be curved in two directions, which I can't do in cardboard. Uh, but very approximately that one's going to go somewhere there and the other one is going to come round onto the front and then uh, if I can hold these both together there'll be some spacing in between them basically the piece here which is where there's kind of a big gap that's going to have another stuck on piece which is going to have a 3D printed hub which is going to look like the shoulder pivot so I've cut out one of these, in fact I've cut both of them out and now I'm going to use a hot air gun to heat this foam and we're going to try and shape it over this dome so that we've got obviously the foam is curved in one direction anyway but all we want is a compound curve so um, it should curve in both directions and give us a kind of nice bell shape so it's quite thick foam so it's going to need quite a bit of heating I think or at least for it to actually form and stay in the shape that we want bending it once is easy Right, let's give that a go. Yep, it's getting there. So there's the curved one, and there's this the one that's only curved in one direction. So hopefully you can see there's uh, quite a bit of difference there, and that's just the right contour. Obviously with the other pieces that get stuck on, they're going to be curved as well. We can bring that whole shoulder bell round to quite a nice curved, pleasing curved shape. So I've just propped those on there. I think they're eventually going to be set a bit lower so they cover more of the bicep. But um, for now I've just propped them on so we can get a feel for what it looks like and I'm pretty happy with the shape and the scale of them. Um, the next piece I've modified slightly so it's got some cutouts where there'll be some features and various bits and pieces. And that's going to be fitted just like that. So. Something like that, and obviously a symmetrical one on the other side. And then we've got, we'll end up with that kind of hex shape in the middle where we can have a feature and some other things. So uh, once that's all together, the end of the original stick that I installed, which you can see there, which is to prop these on, is going to then hold the hub piece, which will be fitted in there. So I think that's going to fit together quite nicely. So I need to cut these out of foam PVC and shape them up, and then we can get sealing and painting. So I've cut my parts out of foam PVC board, so we've got pairs of those. I'm actually going to put these into a domestic oven to heat them through uniformly. We could do it with a hot air gun. Sometimes uh, with big pieces it's better to try and um, get uniform heat throughout them so we don't get hot spots and we don't burn it. And then we're going to drape it back over the first piece that we made. Alright, so that's been in the oven for a few minutes. pretty hot but it's not too hot to touch and we can just drape it over that 
and just try and shape that up. Got a little wrinkle in it and the edges have turned up a bit but they're okay to sand. And that should probably do it. And it cools off quite quick and goes hard again so that's pretty rigid. So we can see how that piece is going to fit. And it's got a nice curve to it. So I just need to do the others making sure that I do some upside down so I get the opposite pieces and then we'll be ready to go. Alright so there's one pair. I've given the edges a bit of a sand in some cases where they wrinkled slightly. But on the whole that's looking pretty good and that's how it's going to be set over the rest of the shoulder bell. So these pieces are going to be painted up as were the other pieces in standard sort of car paints. Just primer, plastic primer and Ford Rosso Red, the same as the hand plates. The foam piece there is going to be primed up first in PVA and then I'm going to spray Plasti Dip on it. This is clear Plasti Dip which is an extremely toxic in its liquid form rubber coating but fine obviously when it's dry. So um, once that's got PVA and Plasti Dip on it, it'll be again primed and painted. So this piece will be gold and this piece is going to be painted up in red. And I've got some 3D printed details to add and various other pieces. So I was going to try and get the shoulder bells finished in this episode, but I'd actually like to go into much more detail on the sealing and painting. Um, if you look back in my channel, I've also got another process for sealing foam. This is plastic coated foam which I've actually sealed with PVA and then put polyurethane on. I'm not going to use that process for these pieces because basically I want to save the weight and the time and the pieces are going to have other layers over them anyway so they're not going to be that easy to see. I might do this for some of the pieces but they're probably just going to be PVA and Plasti Dip. But in any case I'll show you that next time. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future updates on this project. Sometime in October hopefully I'm taking this to a show so you'll be able to see it in real life walking around with people with any luck. Also check out my Facebook group for group project discussions and my Patreon crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get some exclusive rewards including access to a live broadcast with me. Check out my channel for some of my other projects including my 3D printed Back to the Future 2 Mr Fusion, some more of my Iron Man suit from Bryson Mini Maker Fair this year and also my plastic coating for foam process using PVA and smooth on polyurethane.